Exceptional engineers, Pico programmers, and CircuitPython squad. I'm Professor John Gallagher, and in this lesson, I'll be showing you how to add a Stemma QT or Quick Style I squared C port to a board that doesn't already have one. And I'll be demonstrating this using a Raspberry Pi Pico board, but the techniques that I'll demonstrate should work on other CircuitPython compatible boards as well. Then, to prove that things are working, we'll implement a Stemma QT device. I'm going to use a simple temperature sensor to get the temperature, and that's going to be the Adafruit 9808 Stemma QT, since that's what my students are going to be using. And while we're printing temperature readings, we'll learn to format numbers to print a specified number of decimals, as well as no decimals at all. Finally, I'll show you another nifty low-cost solution that is specific to the Pico boards, the Adafruit Cowbell board. So let's slide into Stemma QT or quickly get into Quick with some wiring, coding, and temperature taking circuit Python style. So as mentioned in the earlier lesson, I squared C is one of the big three communication protocols for connecting devices to microcontrollers. Now normally you need four wires to hook up I squared C, but if you have a Stemma QT port, then all you need to work with I squared C is one plug. And and even better, I squared C devices can be daisy chained together, so you only need one plug on your board to work with multiple devices. So Stemma QT is pretty much the same as what SparkFun calls Quick, Q W I I C. The I I C stands for I squared C. Get it? But the only difference is that while SparkFun standard supports 3.3 volt devices, Adafruit Stemma QT can support 3.3 and 5 volt devices as well. Now, most Stemma QT devices are 3.3, so this really isn't a problem. But if you are using a SparkFun Quick device, just make sure that it's supported by a CircuitPython library if you plan to use CircuitPython. Now, Stemma QT devices are increasingly popular standards, and ports are becoming available on all sorts of boards, including the super tiny and inexpensive Adafruit Cutie Pie series. The QT stands for Stemma QT. See what they did there? But not all boards have a Stemma QT port, and one of the boards that my students are using, the Raspberry Pi Pico W, has no Stemma QT port here, but we'll add a Stemma QT connector with a breadboard. And how can we do that? Well, we just use this cable here, which you can buy for less than a dollar. Now, power should go to the 3.3 volt pin, ground can go to any GND pin, but what about SDA, or data, the blue wire, and SCL, or clock, the yellow wire? Well, the Raspberry Pi Pico is a special board in that just about any digital pin can be used as either SDA or SCL. You can see that in this diagram here at pico.pinout.xyz that I demonstrated in an earlier lesson. Now, having so much choice can be confusing for newbies, but here's what I think is a much better choice when setting up I2C in a Pico. I recommend using GP4 for blue or SDA, and GP5 for SEL or yellow. And here's why. If you have your Pico plugged in and you enter the REPL in Moo, just click Serial and press Return to get the triple greater than prompt, then Import Board, and then enter Help with the word Board between parentheses, you'll see output of various components that are available in the board module. And one of these is a function down here called STEMA underscore I2C in all caps. And calling this function on board with board dot, that function name followed by parens, lets us set up an I squared C connection on our board. If you enter I2C in lowercase equals board dot STEMA underscore I2C, open and close parens, and that latter part is all in uppercase, then whenever you refer to lowercase i2c, you'll be referring to your I squared C object. I'll show you how we use this with our temperature sensor in just a bit. So again, connect pin GP4 to the blue or SDA wire, and pin GP5 to SCL or the yellow wire. You can use any ground for black, and plug your power into the 3.3 volt out, unless you're sure you need more power. I don't need to refer to those two pins specifically in my code. The board module knows that's where they'll be. Now there's an additional bonus to using this line of code to set up I squared C in a Pico board. These same pins assumed by this code, GP4 for SDA, GP5 for SEL, are the same connections that are built into the Stemma QT port that's part of this other option here, the Pico Cowbell. They call it a cowbell because when the Pico W came out, people were calling it the P Cow. <laughs> So this less than $2 board works with either the Pico or Pico W, but do know that it doesn't come with headers on it. So you have to both buy those headers and solder them on yourself. But if you're soldering savvy, you can put stacking headers on the board like this, then just plug your Pico into the cowbell, and you've got a Stemma QT port and also a reset button, which isn't built into the Pico. The reset button is nice because you don't need to unplug your board and then plug it back in if you ever want to reset things. So know that the cowbell is also an option. I'm currently using the four pin Stemma QT connection and a breadboard with my class, but either of those options is going to work with this line of CircuitPython code that I've mentioned here. Now, if you've got another board that you want to use and it has a built-in Stemma QT port, the good news is that this line of code here should work on those boards as well. If you have a board that doesn't have a built-in Stemma QT port, you'll have a little bit of detective work to do, but it's not too hard. 
just run the Adafruit pin map script that we demonstrated in the prior lesson. Look for the SDA pin and the SCL pin. Blue goes to the SDA, yellow goes to SCL. This is the script output for the Adafruit Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, and we can see that the SCL is the A4 pin and the SDA is the A5 pin. So the numbers 4 and 5 are just flipped from the Pico that we just showed, and that's how you should connect this cable. So since I'm using a Pico W, I'm going to plug a blue into GP4, yellow into GP5, there's a ground pin next to these, but any will do, and red should go into 3.3 volt out. And now I'm ready to plug in a device to check things out. So this is the Adafruit Stemma QT MCP9808 temperature sensor board, and I'll just plug in the Stemma QT port on the cable that I just installed, and I'll plug my Pico into my USB cable, and we're ready to hop into Moo and code. So working with the MCP9808 is super easy. We just import the Adafruit underscore MCP9808 library. One thing I've just realized is that when we set up this board, we didn't copy over the Adafruit underscore register library. We don't import that, but this library here needs Adafruit register in our LIB folder. I'll be sure to do that before we start coding. Then we declare an I2C object. If you're using a Pico with the wiring I just showed, a cowbell, or your board has a built-in Stemma QT port, you can use this line here to set up I2C. I2C lowercase equals board dot, in all uppercase, Stemma underscore I2C, open and close parens. Make sure you get the cap spelling underscore and parens right. And if you don't have a Pico or Stemma QT port, try this code here. I2C equals board dot in all caps, I2C, open and close parens. And if that doesn't work, just check out the Adafruit Learn Guide for your board. That almost certainly has the info you need. You'll use this same I squared C setup just about any time you use a Stemma QT device. Then we'll create a temperature sensor object. We could call this anything, but here I call it temp underscore sensor. I think that's a good name. And this is created by using the Adafruit underscore MCP9808 library and dot the MCP9808 class in that library. And here we pass in the I2C object that we just created above. And that's because the MCP9808 is an I squared C device. And that's it. We're all set up. Then we just refer to the temp sensors dot temperature property to get the temperature in Celsius. And this formula here will convert that value to Fahrenheit. We can print out both the Celsius and Fahrenheit values and repeat this every two seconds. So let's give this a try. Now friends, there's one other thing that's changed since I first worked with this sensor. It seems recent versions of CircuitPython also require the Adafruit underscore register library to be added. So to do that, I'm going to open up the CircuitPython bundle that I saved when I first set up my board in CircuitPython. I know that the version number of this bundle is the same as the version number for the version of CircuitPython that's on my Pico. And I'll find Adafruit underscore register. Then I'll open my CircuitPy volume and I'll make sure that I drag Adafruit underscore register directly into the LIB folder on CircuitPy. Make sure that it's in the folder, not outside of it. And now we're ready to code things up and move. So I'll put in a comment that we're working with the MCP9808 temperature sensor. Then we need to import three libraries, board, comma, time, comma, and Adafruit underscore MCP9808. Then we create the I squared C object with I2C equals board dot, in all caps, stemma underscore I2C, open and close parens. And I'm going to name my temperature sensor, temp underscore sensor. Set that equal to Adafruit underscore MCP9808. That's the library we just imported. And then say dot MCP9808. That's the class we're going to use. MCP is capitalized in the class. And to set that up, in between parentheses, we pass in I2C, the I squared C object we just created. Then in our while true loop, I'll create a value temp C to hold the temperature in Celsius equals temp underscore sensor dot temperature. Then we'll convert that to Fahrenheit and store that in a value called a temp F. And that'll be equal to temp C times nine divided by five plus 32. That's just the standard Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion formula. Now in this next line, we're gonna print out the temperature in degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit, but I'm also gonna show you how we can format so that we can print out our numeric values to a certain number of decimal places. Now from our earlier CircuitPython school lessons, we learned about F strings. We can proceed the double quotes of a string with a lowercase f, then use curly braces inside the double quotes of a string. And we can fill in those curly braces with a variable or expression. This is going to create a string that takes the values from these variables and makes them part of the string. So for example, here we've got an F string with two sets of curlies. The first one gets the value of temp C. The second gets the value of the variable temp F. And the result we get is this string down here with the numbers indicating our two temps. But inside the curlies, we can also insert special codes to format our data. These codes are called string format specifiers. And you can search for that online if you'd like to learn more about these codes. 
And here are two of the more common things that you might want to do. So if you want to format a value so that only two decimal places show, like you often want to do when you work with currencies, and inside the curlies, you follow your variable or expression with colon, followed by a period, followed by two for two decimal places, and then a lowercase f, which means we're going to be using floating point values. Floating point values are values that can have decimal places. Or if you wanted one or three decimal places, you could change the two to one or three. Or as you see below, if you change the number to zero, then we don't have any decimal point, let alone values to the right of the decimal point. And down here, I also point out that if you cut a value short by formatting, it's rounded. So 0.5 or above will round to the next highest value, otherwise it rounds down. So let's try this out in our code. So we'll print an F string with print and between parens, we'll say F open and close double quotes. Then inside we'll say temperature colon open and close curlies for the first value. Then I'll type degree symbol F. To type the degree symbol on the Mac, it's shift option eight. On Windows, it's alt plus zero one seven six. You don't have to put the degree symbol in there. It's a nice thing to do. Then I'll say comma space open and close curlies for the second value in my F string. I'll follow that with degree symbol C. Then in the first set of curlies, I'll enter my value temp F. In the second set, I'll say temp C, but then I'll add my format specifiers. So after temp F, I'm gonna say colon space dot one lowercase F. So that's gonna format any decimal to one place. And just to try this with a different number of decimals, after temp C, I'm gonna say colon space dot two F. And that'll give me two decimals for the Celsius temperature. Then I'll add a time dot sleep passing in 1.0 to wait one second between each temperature reading. Then let's save this and take a look at our results. So it looks like it's 69 degrees in G-Force Labs. Let's pick up the sensor and see if we can warm things up. So I'll put my thumb right over the sensor and we can see the temperature is going up quite a bit now that I got my thumb on that. I'll take my thumb off, the temp goes down. And if I put this on a glass of ice water that I've got, I've got to hold it for a while, but we can see the temp should go down even more. So, all right, our sensor is working. Congratulations, coder. Once again, we've covered a lot of ground in this lesson. We learned how to breadboard a cable with a Stemma QT connector so that even boards without a Stemma QT port can work with Stemma QT. We used an MCP9808 temperature sensor, and we learned how to get this working with CircuitPython to show both Celsius and Fahrenheit temperatures. And we learned how to use F strings with string format specifiers to print values with a specific number of decimal places or no decimals at all. Pythonista, I hope all the goodness in your life continues to round up, keep coding, there's more big learning ahead.